श्रुति स्मृति पुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ सहना सहनौन सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मावेषा वह ओ शांति 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 टुडे वी बिगिन विद दिस शॉर्ट बट वेरी प्रोफाउंड टेक्स्ट और प्रकरण ग्रंथ वन ऑफ द मेनी कंपोज बाय आदि शंकराचार्य एंड इट इज वेरी वेल नोन प्रात स्मरण स्त्रोत्रम and this is uh, definitely chanted by all vedantins the first thing in the morning maybe after suprabhatam but the first thing and it is a daily health tonic so we don't begin the day without chanting these uh, three profound verses and um, this is truly a masterpiece no in just three verses Adi Shankaracharya has expressed the whole essence of Vedanta. Yeah. Now, you know, we have seen a number of prakaranas earlier also. You no. Know? Whether it is uh, essence of Vedanta in uh, one verse, we have seen that also, Eka Shloki, or the current one which we are going to do today, three verses. and there are panchakams there are uh, shatkams there are ashtakams and dashishloki and so on or up to upadesha sahasri which is a text on vedanta in a thousand verses so in all of them you know none other than the genius of adi shankaracharya can uh, express the essence of vedanta so today we are going to see this uh, text called pratas marana which is a morning meditation and uh, it consists of three contemplative verses chanted at dawn yeah and uh, why at dawn <clears throat> because early morning early morning we know is the most sattvic hour of the day yeah it is also called brahma muhurta and it is a time when they say that uh, the cosmic vibrations are at the peak there are tapasvis yogis devatas they are all doing the tapas and the aradhana yeah from 3:30 am onwards and uh, the moment the sun rises then rajas has entered the atmosphere yeah because everybody is springing to activity but in the morning time that's the best me time i will get because i am rejuvenated and rested from the night sleep and the mind is fresh provided one has had a good night sleep one is rested and went to bed early the previous night yeah and whatever i uh, think about in those early hours they're so powerful that they form a strong imprint on my mind yeah a samskara and that becomes the background thought if it is powerful enough for the rest of the day and also in the early morning when i get up then i have not stepped into any of the roles yeah the day is yet to begin and i am filled with hope and so these verses are normally chanted early morning yeah but of course there is no restriction 
enchanting it at other times of the day, like late evening or midnight. But the only problem is at that hour, the sattva guna is not so prevalent. As soon as the sun sets, which guna will take predominance? Tamo guna. Yeah? The tamo guna is the quality of nature that will make everything dull and it will induce sleep. Yeah? And moreover, we are tired from the day. So really the best uh, time to chant these uh, verses and to reflect upon them is early morning. Now, this is uh, the three uh, verses are chanted in the early morning. So, prataha means dawn. Yeah? And smaranam is remembrance. So, prata smaranam is the early morning meditation. Yeah? Now, what do we understand by meditation? Usually, it is about I meditate on an object of meditation. I can do Surya meditation, Devi meditation, uh, Mahavishnu meditation, where there is a meditator and an object of meditation and a, and a upasana, a meditation. Yeah. So the three factors are involved. Yeah. But these three verses are about Vedantic meditation. It is not meditation on another object of worship because it is not a saguna brahma dhyanam. We have seen that in chapters of the Gita. Saguna Brahma Dhyanam is an upasana, yeah? where I am directing the mind towards a chosen object. It can be the Guru, it can be Sai Baba, it can be Mahavishnu. But here, this being a Nididhyasanam Grantha, the meditation is on oneself, is on my true nature. Then what is my true nature? Shastra says, you are that Brahma, you are Shivaha, not this Jiva. And hence, what all I have heard about the vision of the Shastra, the Shastra says, you are that Brahma, that Brahma Tvamasi, that is the vision of the Shastras. And when the Shravanam has been followed up by Mananam, yeah, Mananam is what? Samshaya Nivrittihi, when I have removed the doubts, and yes, I agree, Shastra's vision about myself. Only then, this Vedantic meditation will be fruitful. Nidhi Dhyasnam is when I choose to meditate on myself. Now, what happens, how to do this meditation is early morning when I chant these verses and I'm sitting very quietly. There is no object, external or internal. We don't choose any object of worship. Simply sitting quietly, watching the mind. What is likely to happen? A lot of turbulence. When we begin meditation, we know that. The mind will be chattering. Oh, I have so many things to do today. <laughs> the to-do list, I will remember. And something that happened yesterday is carried forward today. But as I continue to watch, to remain a witness, then slowly the mind chatter begins to subside subside and become calmer and calmer. And then it is said that that inner space that I discover, the space between who I really am and the roles I'm going to play, that space is a space of freedom, space of creativity, the space of um, love for oneself. That is the Atma Ananda. Usually what happens? I am identified with the body and the mind. And then I play so many roles in a day. I'm a daughter, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a grandparent, I'm a citizen. Yeah, and then variety of emotions I experience just as an actor, you know, an actor, when he has signed up for a few films, he is a beggar in one film, a minister in the second, a lawyer in the third, yeah. But he plays all the roles perfectly. He is bashed up in, uh, in the beggar role. He's awarded as a minister, yeah? And he's challenged as a lawyer. But this actor is free from all the roles he plays. Inside, he's enjoying the freedom and he's very happy that he is signed up for crores of rupees he is going to get. So too, such uh, uh, Pratasmarana meditator stotrams helps one to discover the space between 
that Atma Tattvam that we are going to explore in these three verses and all the roles that I play. Then why should I study this Shastram? I am playing my roles as my duty. But what is likely to happen is when I'm playing the roles, I get caught up the problems of the roles in the problems of the roles and I get challenged and tense is there, tension is there, stress is there. Yeah. So the question asked is, is there a fundamental invariable me yeah, that is free from all the roles? Just as the actor is free from all the roles he has signed up. So this space that I win, especially in the early morning, will help me follow the script of every role to the best extent possible. And yet I remain very centered and grounded and relaxed. So when we do regular meditation like this, yeah, then uh, the day becomes uh, you know, very peaceful and very fulfilling. So that is uh, you know, what this uh, stotram is all about. And now we will dive into the verses. First, we are going to chant the verse. There are three verses. Lakshmi Mami, I have requested to chant after me. Yes, Amma. Huh? We'll do line by line. Hmm? Yeah. Yes. Om Pratasmarami Hridisam Spuradatmatatvam Om Pratasmarami Hridisam Spuradatma Tattvam Tachit Sukham Paramaham Sagatim Turiyam Sachit Sukham Paramaham Sagatim Turiyam Yat Swapna Jagara Sushuptama Vaiti Nityam Yat Swapna Jagara Sushuptama Vaiti Nityam Tat Brahmanishkalam aham nachabhuta sanghaha. Tat Brahmanishkalam aham nachabhuta sanghaha. I'll chant it once now. Om Pratasmarami Hrudisam Spuradatma Tatvam. Sachit Sukham Paramaham Sagatim Turiyam Yat Swapna Jagara Sushuptam Avaiti Nityam Tat Brahmanishkalam Aham Najabhuta Sanghaha So Prataha Smarami Hridi Samspurat Atma Tatvam Sachit Sukham Paramahamsa Gatim Turiyam Yat Swapna Jagara Sushuptam or Sushuptim, both are correct. Avaiti Nityam Tat Brahma Nishkalamaham Naja Bhuta Sanghaha. So here in the first verse. Acharya says, Prataha smarami. At the dawn, early morning, aham smarami. Smarami, you know, is I remember, I recollect, I contemplate. On what? Atma tattvam. Atma tattvam is the self. And where is that Atma tattvam? Hridi. Hridi stands for, is a saptami of hrid. Hrid means heart. Now, the heart is really not the physical location, we know, but hridi is manasi, also we can say, in the mind, in the heart, in the inner space of awareness. And that atma tattvam is samspurat. Samspurat means shining, self-shining. Yeah? So, the first line is, Pratasmarami hridi samspurat atma tattvam. 
in the early morning, I contemplate, meditate on myself, on the Atma Tattvam, which is shining in my heart. It's also called Chidakasha, that space of awareness. Then, what kind of Atma is it? Now we are going to see the description of that Atma Tattva. Sat, Chit, Sukham. Three very important words. And we also know it as Sat, Chit, Anandam. So let's take it one by one. What is Sat? Sat is, stands for Satyam. Both same. Sat is Satyam. And Satyam is that I am. The easiness, we say. No? What is easiness? The pure existence. Pure existence is defined in the Shastras as Trikaleshi Yat Tishthati Tat Satyam. Abhadita Satyam. The Sanskrit words just mean is that that Satyam which holds good and cannot be negated in all the three periods of time. That is, it was, is, and will be. That is the Satya. You know, when we introduce ourselves, you know, we will say, I am so-and-so, Mr. Sharma. I'm a retired professor from IIT. You know, I'm male. I'm a senior citizen. I'm a grandparent. All these definitions will come. In each of them, there is I am, I am, I am, I am. So when we separate that I am, that is the Sat aspect, pure existence. And all the others are definitions, labels, attributes, um, you know, all that define me. All the definitions are centered on what? The body, mind, sense complex. Yeah. If I say I'm tall, tallness, shortness belongs to the Stula Shariram, Annamaya Kosha. Then I'm happy, sad, confused. No, uh, focused, that is the Manomaya Kosha. So like that, the Pancha Koshas or the three bodies, their attributes, their definitions yeah, are, can be negated. Yeah, it, uh, can be negated. But what cannot be negated is that I am the easiness. And that is the pure existence and called Sat. And that is one of the words to describe Atma Tattva. Then what is the second word? Chit. Yeah. Chit is, stands for the pure sentience. Yeah. Chit is the knowing principle. If I exist, do I know myself or not? Yes, I am. And so I know. I know that I am. You know, supposing you are in a dark room and I ask uh, I ask the question, are you there? Yeah. So what will your answer be? Do you need a flashlight to know that you are there? <laughs> do you need to think before answering me? Yes, I'm there. Yeah, do you need to feel yourself to answer? So that, uh, that I am, I know that I am, is the awareness principle, the shining principle, the principle of sentience, and that is chit. Now, this chit aspect is, uh, you know, is not known, let's say, in this pot. <laughs> you know, the sat aspect is there because you can't have a pot without the clay. Yeah, and you can't have the clay without sat. But does the pot know its existence? No, because there is no sukshma shariram, no subtle body. And hence, the chit, the sentience is absent. No. So the chit is shining everywhere. You know, right now, chit is the all-pervading uh, shining principle. But it can only shine brilliantly in a mind. Yeah. Wherever there is a sukshma sharira, chit will radiate. In a bird, in an insect, mosquito, wherever there is a subtle body. But in insentient objects, sat continues. Sat is there, but chit is absent. In the Eta Shloki, you know, we saw this um, beautiful analogy of the sun. You know? How do I know that there is the sun shining? I open my eyes to see it. But how do my eyes know that it is the physical sun? Because the mind is making the eye sentient. But how does the mind uh, know? Because of chit. 
So that principle of sentience, which makes my mind glow. And through the mind, the chit is borrowed by the sense organs and the body. That is the principle of awareness or chit. So we also say jnana swarupaha. Yeah? Sat is the uh, principle of pure existence and chit is awareness principle. Then what is the third very important principle? Ananda or sukham. Sukham. Now sukham, you know, it is said sukham is my true nature. <laughs> but do I experience the sukham? No. Most of the time the sukham is covered. Yeah? So it's covered because by all these uh, labels. Now, whenever I'm identified with a rule, with a body, with a definition, with a label, then what is likely to happen? There will be complexes. I'm too tall, I'm too short, I'm too dark. I'm unsuccessful. I'm not as uh, happy as others. So all these are centered on what? Anatma. But where is real Sukham? Shastra says that is your very nature. You are the fullness, you are that Anandam. So how do I understand that? When we see in life, what makes me happy? Maybe my baby makes me happy. My spouse makes me happy. Yeah, and a situation in the world, getting a promotion in office made me happy. But what really, what is real happiness is, Shastra says, the, in the world, there are many causes. There are situations which make my mind turn inwards and then the Atma Anandam fullness is expressed. Yeah. So whether it is Yoga Ananda, Vidya Ananda, Vishya Ananda, it is all a lesha. It is a fraction of the Anandam, the fullness that I am. That is the third aspect of Atma Tattvam. Anandam or uh, here in this shloka, it is called uh, Sukham. We can also understand that by um, understanding that if that external object, let's say my uh, child, you know, when the child answers back, is uh, does not obey, does not listen to my uh, instructions, then will the child continue to be a source of ananda for me? No. The child becomes a dukkha hetu. Yeah? And I, I want to go away from the child and I don't want to you know, be around that person or that situation which is causing me dukkham, even though that had caused, given me sukham earlier. So this shows that we want anandam all the time. But where is that anandam? That anandam is in is the nature of atma tattvam. And it is experienced whenever there is a favorable situation in the external world. Again, we can understand that by the phenomenon of deep sleep. Now, when we are in the sushupti avastha, what happens? I have no relatives. Yeah? There are no complexes. There are no conflicts, no role playing. Most important, there is no role playing. There is no struggle. There is no pursuit of goals. There is no effort. And I am blissfully in anandam. So that shows that that ananda must be my true nature. That is the revelation we get through the sushupti avastha. So in the second line, sat, chit, sukham is the threefold nature of atma tattvam on which I meditate in the space of my heart early morning. Pratasmarami, pridhi samspurat atma tattvam, which is sat, chit, sukham. Then, Paramahamsa Gatim. And that Atma Tattvam is the Gati. Gati means the goal yeah, to be reached. What is the goal for whom? Paramahamsas. Who are the Paramahamsas? Paramahamsas are the sannyasis or simply renunciates. Those who, those Mamukshus who pursue this Atma Tattvam are Mamukshus and gain the status of a Paramahamsa. You know, the word Paramahamsa is very uh, beautiful. Uh, Shastras talk about a mythological swan. No? A swan which could uh, discriminate between milk and water. Let's say milk, water is added to milk. So 
there is a swan that can separate the two. So why are the renunciates called Paramahamsa? Because just like the swan, the Paramahamsa renunciates can separate Atma from Anatma. <laughs> Not physically, but cognitively. So they know that the Anatma is time-bound, perishable, finite, yeah, and uh, ever in a state of uh, subject to change, but Atma Tattvam is Sat, Chit, Sukham. And hence, they are called Paramahamsas, the renunciates, who are Vivekis, who have the power of discrimination, and they are pursuing that infinite, imperishable Atma Tattvam. Then Turiyam. Turiyam is another word for Atma Tattvam. In the Mandukya Upanishad, the word Turiyam comes. The Turiyam means the fourth. Yeah? What is the fourth? The fourth is other than the three. <laughs> and the three comes in the next line. Yat Swapna Jagara Sushuptim or Sushuptam. Both are correct. So we know that there are the three avastas. Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti. Right? Waking state, dream and deep sleep. And in the waking state, I'm very much identified with the gross body. Yeah? And I go about my duties and role playing. And then when I get tired and rest, then I'm identified with the sukshma shariram, the subtle body, and I'm in a dream world. <laughs> there also there are pursuits and there is struggle and dvaitam is there also. Subject, object. Yeah, only it is the replayed version. If the waking world is recording experiences, then in the dream world, there is a replay. But the replay happens in a very weird combination. <laughs> yeah, weird combination. But the dream is very real for the dreamer. Thank you, sir. And then when the mind is tired of dreaming, it falls into deep sleep. Yeah? The most desired state. Because that is the state which is most healing. And that is the state which is um, rejuvenating. And where I experience my own Ananda Swarupa. But the only problem with deep sleep is I am passively experiencing it, not actively experiencing it, even though it is necessary. You know? So Turiyam is the fourth, fourth, the fourth that is uh, the principle of continuity in all the other three. Yeah, That is, I say, I am awake now, then I dreamt and I slept. So again, the I continues and that same I is none other than Atma Tattvam and that gets the name of Turiyam. Turiyam is the fourth. So the Paramahamsa renunciates, gain the knowledge of the fourth that is called Turiyam in the waking state by the pursuit of this Rajavidya, Atma Jnanam. So in the waking state, they want to gain knowledge of the true self. And that is what moksha is all about. Yet swapna jagara sushuptim avaiti nityam. Avaiti means witnessing. So the atma tattvam avaiti. It is the witness of all the three states of experience. It is turiyam. Nityam always. So even in the waking world, you know, when I chant these uh, stotrams, when I gain the space, then am I not observing my activities during the day? Whether it is parenting or office work or I'm on the laptop or I'm walking. So there is a witnessing awareness and that is avaiti. Yeah? That which witnesses all the experiences in all the three states and avastas always nityam. That is what that Brahma, last line, that Brahma. Shastra says that is the supreme reality, Brahma. Brahma, and that Brahma is nishkalam. See, kala, the word kala means a rays or parts. So nishkalam is partless. So that Brahma is like the space-like awareness. There are no parts here. 
it is spotless whole tat brahma nishkalam aham then the last quarter is nacha bhuta sangaha i am not this bhuta sangaha what is bhuta bhuta is a being but we can also take it as a pancha mahabhutas and sangaha means the aggregate that which is put together intelligently so is not the body mind sense aggregate put together intelligently yes we have seen in tatva bodha how the gross body is derived from the tamo guna of the pancha mahabhutas and the subtle body from the sattvic element of the pancha mahabhutas and the organs of action and the pranas from the rajoguna so really the body is gross matter and the subtle body is subtle matter and so here acharya says i am not this aggregate of five elements bhuta sangaha i am tat brahma which is spotless and the whole so this is the profound uh, meaning early morning i remind smarami i remind myself of my true nature which is uh, partless which is the whole which is the witness of the three states which is turiyam which is whose nature is sat chit sukham and which is ever pulsating as pure existence it is the non negatable truth of myself yeah that is why early in the morning you know we should not check the mobile phone right away <laughs> because once we do that one hour will be sucked away from that precious me time that sacred hour in the morning yeah now even if you know i am not convinced that atma tattvam still what happens if i chant these verses in the morning i am programming my subconscious mind and then those samskaras when you know by repetition they become so strong then they will reflect in my external uh, conduct yeah. they will give me the space when they are strong enough yeah. so right now so many other samskaras are coming to the forefront is it not i get uh, impulsive i jump to reactions i am uh, mechanical behavior or impulsive i get angry why because those samskaras are now dominant but when i overwrite those uh, rajasik and tamasik samskaras with such uh, uh, samskaras of prata smarana stotram then they will uh, bear fruit in the form of my behavior yeah? so that is the uh, first uh, shloka describing atma tattva let's move on to the second one Again, we'll chant it first, line by line, so you can follow. Oh, Pratar Bhajami Manasa Vachasam Gamyam. Oh, Pratar Bhajami Manasa Vachasam Gamyam. वाचो विभांति निखिलाय धनुग्रहेण वाचो विभांति निखिलाय धनुग्रहेण यम नेति नेति वचने निगम अवोचु हो यम नेति नेति वचने निगम अवोचु हो तम देव देव मजमच्युत माहुरक्रय तम देव देव मजमच्युद अच्युत माहुरक्रय प्रातर भजा मनसा वच सामगम्य वाचो विभांति निखिलाय धनुग्रहेण
So here, let's see the words. Prataha. Prataha is Avdeyam Shabda. Prataha, dawn, bhajami. Here the verb has changed from smarami to bhajami. Then manasa vachasam agamyam. Manasa vachasam agamyam. Vacho or vachaha vibhanti nikhila yat anukrahena. Yam neti neti vachanehi nigama avochuhu. Tam deva devam ajam achitam avuhu agrayam. The last word is a bit long. There are many words, important words there. Deva devam ajam achitam avuhu agrayam. So here, what does Acharya say here? Again, the, uh, the contemplation on the Atma Tattvam continues. You know, Atma Tattvam is like a diamond. Now, how we appreciate the diamond from different points of view. So first verse is a point of view. And now we come to the second verse. Prataha Bhajami. Bhajami is I worship. No, we say I worship. But again, we said this is not a Dvaita meditation. It is not a Saguna Brahma Upasana, but it is meditation on oneself as Atma Tattvam. So how do we understand a Bhajami as contemplation? I direct the mind towards that self-shining, effulgent Atma Tattvam in the space of my heart, in the inner space. That is the bhajami. And not in the traditional sense of the word like a puja or bhajanam, yeah, singing the praise. No. It is only uh, directing the mind towards the inner space. Prataha bhajami. Now, manasa vachasam agamyam. Agamyam means that which cannot be uh, gained, which cannot be reached. So what are we talking about here? Same Atma Tattvam. Now Atma Tattvam, Acharya says, it cannot be reached by Manasa, by the mind. And what else? Vachasam, by the words. So what this means is that the Atma Tattvam is, is not an object. You know, when I define an object, then I will specify its form its name, its guna, its function, kriya. So kriya, guna, nama, rupa. Well, I say, okay, this is my cook. You know, she cooks wonderfully. You know, she is uh, uh, 40 years of age. She is from this community. So we can define an object which is tangible, which is who is concrete, centered on the body, mind, sense, complex. But atma tattvam, the space like awareness, which has no location, all pervading, it is agamyam. Agamyam means it is not, cannot be defined or experienced as an object. Like the familiar example of electricity. Yeah? When the electricity flows through a bulb, a filament, then it is experienced as light. But electricity itself is not experienced, experienceable. So that is the nature of this tattvam. And hence Mundaka Upanishad says, Tat Brahma is ashabdam, asparsham, arupam, arasam, agandham. It is not available to be experienced by the five sense organs of knowledge or five sense organs of action and not even by the mind. We cannot conceive of the atma. Atma is like this, is like that. A categorical definition is not possible. Yeah? That is meant by agamyam. Manasa vachasam agamyam. Yeah? Even Kena Upanishad. You know, the guru tells the students that atma is the ear of the ear, eye of the eye, prana of the prana, and it is the mind of the minds. Yeah? Second line will make this more clear. Vacho vibhanti nikhila yat anukrahena. It's the reverse. Yat anukrahena. 
by whose grace and blessings everything else functions <laughs> vachaha nikhila vachaha means all the words vibhanti vibhanti means they shine yeah they become manifest right now if i am speaking and you are listening how are these functions happening yat anugrahena by whose grace and that we saw in the first verse that is the atma tattvam has made my mind sentient and the sense organs borrow the sentience from the sentient mind and only then there can be shabda sparsha rupa rasa gandha yeah so by whose grace all the words shine and the words manifest vacho vibhanti nikila yatana prahena that is the atma tattvam yeah but by itself atma tattvam cannot be defined in words or conceived by the mind yeah? it is unfathomable now <laughs> then if it is not uh, if it cannot be reached you know by uh, words then why are we studying uh, atma tattvam shastras you know how to meditate on atma the third line is going to explain that yam neeti neeti vachanaihi nigama avochu yam na iti na iti vachanaihi nigamaha avochu so then how to know the atma when uh, it it is uh, cannot be experienced first of all we have to understand that it is the very experiencer it is the subject it is drik it is the observer it is sakshi so just as i cannot see my own eyes except in a mirror i can never understand the atma tattvam without the mirror of the shastras the guru is holding up the shastra like a mirror and asking us to look into the mirror which will reveal my nature so here yam yam stands for the atma tattva that yam neeti neeti vachanehi nigama avochu what is nigama nigama are the vedas yeah agama nigama vedas all same words synonyms so nigama avochu who yeah the scriptures say or declare avochu nigamaha avochu what by these words vachanaihi by these words what kind of words na iti na iti na neeti neeti is a very famous prakriya teaching methodology now we have seen a number of prakriyas avastha tre prakriya karana karya prakriya panchakosha prakriya a prakriya is a method which the shastras employ to arrive at the truth of atma tattva and neeti neeti is one of them how does this prakriya work na iti na iti means not this not this so the shastras reveal the atma by negation yeah is the atma the body no yeah is the atma the mind no is it the sense organs no so like that when you negate everything like uh, uh, is the atma the profession atma the tallness shortness fairness darkness is a, a state of emotion state of achievement a qualification attribute guna all are negated by these two words simple words na iti na iti yam neeti neeti vachanaihi nigama avochu hu yeah? then then what tam tam and that is deva devam that atma tattvam is devon ka dev is the lord of all the devatas now we have seen how the devatas are sukshma uh, jivas subtle exalted jivas now even actually the subtle functions in our body like the faculty of sight is a devata faculty of smell is a devata but the supreme reality which has empowered all the devatas that is tam tam deva devam and what is the nature of that tam that is ajah now here we have ajam achitam ahuhu agrayam arin dvitiya vibhakti but when in prathama we will say ajah 
Ajaha Achitaha Agrayaha. Ajaha we know from the Gita, Ajonitya Shashvato Yam Puranaha and Hanyati Hanyamani Sharvi. Najayati iti Ajaha. So that uh, supreme reality, which cannot be categorically defined, by which everything shines. You know, you know that Arati Mantra, Tameva Bhantam Anubhati Sarvam. Because of the shining Atma Tattvam, all pervading, the whole world is shining in the borrowed sentience. Very simple example is the sun shines, but the moon shines after the sun in the borrowed sunlight. So the world shines because of the self shining Atma Tattvam. And where does the Atma Tattvam get the shine from? It is self shining. Self-effulgent Atma Tattva. So that is described as Ajaha. Ajaha means there was never a birth for that Atma Tattva. It is birthless. Ajaha. And hence not subject to change or death. Then Achyutaha. Achyuta we know is the name for Krishna. Achyutam Keshavam. We sing these. No? But in the Vedantic context, Achyutaha is for whom there is no Chyuti. Chuti means fall or change. So that which is invariable, changeless is Achyutaha. And that is the Atma Tattvam. Yeah. Then we have uh, Ahuhu. Ahuhu is they say. Who say? The Vedas. Nigamaha Ahuhu. And what is Agriyam? Agriya, Agriya means foremost. So that Atma Tattvam is the supreme, yeah, causeless cause. And we have seen all this in the Gita already. So this won't be a problem to understand this, right? So <clears throat> this uh, second uh, shloka is also talking about the glory of that Atma Tattvam, which makes every experience possible. Any experience I have in the world is through the body mind sense complex yeah but that is by the anugraham of the atma tattva and hence we can't experience atma tattva directly i want to experience atma in my meditation it's not going to happen because the experiencer is the atma then how do i meditate on atma if i just sit still ramana maharishi says be still and know thyself. When I'm still, then I'm able to know that I am that Ajaha, that Agriyam, that Achitaha, that which is pure existence. So that takes uh, a mature mind. That is why the emphasis is there on Karma Yoga, on Upasanas first. First, we would have had to do karma yoga, upasana, shravanam, mananam. Then only we come to this nididhyasana. So when I do such a nididhyasana, then I free the mind from these notions and conclusions I have about myself. I am mortal. I am aging. I am miserable. I, I have this conflict. Should I do this? Should I not do this? No. So when there is a clarity, what is Atma, what is Anatma, by such an Iridhyasnam, then I am free from conflicts and uh, complexes. So that is the second shloka. Now let's move on to the third and the final one. I may take a few minutes extra because I don't want to rush through these uh, very profound, loaded verses here. Hmm? Let's chant the third one. Om Dratar Namami Tamasa Paramar Kavaranam Om Dratar Namami Tamasa Paramar Kavaranam Purnam Sanatana Padam Purushotamakyam Purnam Sanadana Padam Purushottamakyam Yasmin Nidam Jagata Sheshama Sheshamurtao 
यस मिन्नीदम जगदशेषमशेषमूर्त रज्वाजंगम इव प्रतिभाजंगम इव प्रतिभासीतम वै प्रवतरनमास परमर्कवर्ण पूर्ण सनातन पदम पुषोत्तमाख्यम यस्द जगत शेषमशेषमूर्त रज्वाजंगम इव प्रतिभासीतम वै this is core vedanta here and here acharya says pratah namami now the verb is namami we had smarami bhajami now namami nam dhatu i salute yeah i salute i bow down before the supreme when early morning at dawn and See, dawn is a very symbolic, uh, has a symbolic meaning, isn't it? It it is associated with awakening, with light, with hope, and that is why that meaning is applied here. I bow down, I salute to that Atma Tattvam at early dawn, Pratah Namami, which is Tamasah Param. Tamasah is the Tamoguna. What is the Tamoguna? Tamoguna is darkness darkness is nothing but ignorance darkness is ignorance actually the uh, upanishad say even our worldly activities is also darkness <laughs> only that parama atma tattvam is light so tamasah param that atma tattvam is beyond darkness so we understand it like this that i if i'm ignorant about something yeah do i not know that i'm ignorant yes i'm ignorant of so many things you know i'm ignorant of french language i'm ignorant of uh, you know chartered accountancy i'm ignorant of uh, meteorites so many things yeah but i know that i'm ignorant and i know that i know also so atma is beyond ignorance as that knowing principle tamasah param then it is arka varnam arka is the sun and varnam is the color so atma tattvam has the luster the color of the sun now we should not imagine the golden glow of atma no what it means is that that sentience the knowing principle the awareness awareness is the shining chit principle is compared as the arka varnam here so i bow down before that supreme being in the early hours of the morning which is beyond both darkness and knowledge now we talk about apara knowledge here whatever worldly knowledge it is beyond that because even worldly knowledge is tamas is a form of darkness so tamasah param whether i know something or not know something atma tattvam is beyond both tamasah param then it is purnam this is purna vidya yeah purnam means it is free from any inadequacy free from desire you know the gita we have seen atmani eva atmana tushtah so that which is the fullness atma tattvam is the fullness which is centered on atma yeah but when i when i am identified with the body mind sense complex then there is a lack yeah there is a lack so a lack a desire a trishna is always going to be centered on body mind sense but here atma tattvam is purnam Purayeti sarvam iti purna ha. That which has filled up everything, and that which is the indwelling reality. Then sanatana padam. Sanatana means eternal. Eternal padam. Padam is goal. Yeah. 
and goal means abode and this abode is again not a loka no like uh, not a loka is vaikuntha or kailas or goloka but this is the atma tattvam in the context of vedanta sanatana padam is yadgatva nanivartante in the gita we have seen the shloka some of us in chapter 15 that when you gain the atma gyanam there is no return to samsara so that is the sanatana padam the parama padam sanatana padam which is self knowledge or moksha and that atma atma tattvam is purushottam akhyam is called or named as what purushottama we have seen this also quite recently in the gita and there is a whole chapter 15 devoted to purushottama purushana uttamaha so that supreme being is referred to as purushottama purushottama is the one who is beyond shara and akshara purusha which we will see more in chapter 15 of the gita yeah the highest supreme being yeah? now the last two lines is Uh, a bit loaded yasmin idam jagat ashesham ashesha murtav rajvam bhujangam eva pratibhasitam vai so here i will remind you of the famous uh, stock example in the shastra which is the raju sarpa analogy we saw that recently in the three orders of uh, reality no paramarthika vyavaharika and pratibhasika so that classic example when in semi darkness i have mistaken a rope for a snake and there are all the symptoms of fear and um, i'm trembling bp has shot up you know rajvam the last line will take rajvam bhujangam eva bhujanga is a snake yeah so on the raju on the rope a snake has appeared not really but it is a projection of my mind prati bhasitam vai it is superimposed by lack of knowledge because it is dark and i did i don't have clarity about the rope so i have mistaken it for a snake rajvam bhujangam eva prati prati bhasitam vai indeed now the third line is this example comes in the brahma sutras also and shastra says that just as a rope was mistaken for the snake so too this entire jagat is like a snake which has been superimposed on atma tattvam yasmin idam jagat ashesham ashesha murtau yeah so the entire universe of names and forms yeah is up, upheld what is the adhara for the jagat that is this atma tattvam supreme brahma in which the jagat appears ashesham ashesham means kritsam the entire universe just as even a snake appears or appeared on the rope so this is nothing other than the famous statement of shankara brahma satyam jagan mithya so when i have an understanding of what is the reality of the jagat it is temporary it is time bound it is a vyavaharika reality where i have my roles i play my roles which are changing all the time the state of constant flux yeah but then what is the adhara what is the truth of the samsara that is the supreme brahma atma tattvam and that is just the opposite that is ajaha not subject to change not even born and cannot die that is pure existence that is the source of all anandam and that is the shining principle of sentience So yasmin idam jagat ashesham ashesha murtau. The entire universe is in which, yeah. and uh, we saw this in chapter nine also. No, matthani sarvabhutani. 
Nachaham Teshu Vastitaha. That is, all the beings are in me, Krishna said in the ninth chapter, but I am not in them. Yeah? So that is something like this, you know, the pot is in clay, but clay is not in the pot. Clay is independently existing, pot is dependent on the clay. So the Jagat is, has a dependent existence and borrows the sentience from the Paramartika Satyam. And that Paramartika Satyam is that in which the whole Jagat appears. So Brahma Satyam, Jagat Mitya is the truth of essence of these last two lines. Then we have um, you know, the Kalishuddhi. Shlokatraya midam punyam, lokatraya vibhushanam. Ashtigal uh, can chant. Ma, Ma, this verse is not there in the book actually. Ah, I'm displaying it on the screen. Yeah, 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 then I can. Lokatraya midam punyam, lokatraya vibhushanam. Slokatraya midam punyam, lokatraya vibhushanam. Pratha kali patitias tu, sagache paramam padam. Pratha kale patidyas tu sagachet paramampadam. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sometimes this uh, Palashruti is missed, you know, because see, Palashruti and all gets added on later. Do you think Adi Shankaracharya would have added a Palashruti <laughs> to his composition? No. But Palashruti is important because as human nature wants palam all the time. <laughs> so we are eyeing the palam. If I do this, what will I get? If I do that, what will I get? So it is always put to encourage the people to chant it at least and to know its benefits. So what is the Palashruti here? Shloka Trayam, this triad of verses, idam punyam, which is very meritorious. It's a great punya karma to chant and meditate on these. It is the Lokatraya Vipushanam, the ornament of the three worlds. And the one who would read it in the early morning, Pratah Kale Pathet Yaha, Tu. What will happen to him? Saha Gachhe Paramam Padam. He will gain the final goal. The final goal, which is Moksha. So we've seen uh, these three profound loaded verses all are explaining that Atma Tattvam on which I meditate in the early hours of the morning before I step into any of the roles. And we have seen why we do this because I want to imprint upon my mind that I'm going to enter this world now and perform all the roles, but may I not get entangled and obsessed with any of the roles. Let me enjoy the inner freedom yeah, from the problems of the roles. Definitely I'll be proactive and uh, perform the roles to the best of the ability, but I will never forget my true nature, which is Atma Tattva, which was described in these verses. No? So you see that, uh, you know, Atma is the eternal being in which there is no doing. Atma is the silent witness. Akarta abhokta Atma. Simply is. Yeah? But Anatma is constantly doing. There is no being there. <laughs> the body is aging. The mind is constantly in a state of flux. So Atma, Anatma, you can see the difference there. And we have seen that shloka in chapter 4. Karmanya karma yapashe akarmani cha karmayaha sabuddhiman manusheshu sakritna krit. Sayogi kritsna karma krit. That is the one who meditates regularly, you know, in the early morning, will clearly know what is actionless atma and what is full of action anatma. <laughs> Definitely, 
I have to do my duties. Nitya naimitika karmas have to be performed. Yeah. But I can perform it as waves appear in the ocean. You know, the waves rise and fall, but all within the ocean. So I can understand that all the happenings and the experiences are happening on the background of that Atma Tattvam. Mayeva Sarvam Sakalam Jatam Mai Sarvam Pratishtitam Mayeva Layam Yati Tat Brahma Advayam Aham Asmi. We saw this mantra in Kaivalya Upanishad that from me, Ashvalayana is, you know, uh, displaying what he learned to Brahmadev, that from me, the world has manifest. And by me, the world will be sustained. And into me, the world will return. And that Advayam Brahma Aham Asma. No? Even when we see early morning, when I get up, the world returns for me, is it not? <laughs> Then I, I may be confused initially. And then when I look around, oh, it's my bedroom. Then I know who I am. Okay, you know, I, I am so-and-so. This is my home. Then the world is sprung back. Then I give reality to the world. And then at night, where does the world disappear? In deep sleep, into me. And that me is the Atma Tattva, which was described in these three verses. So let me quickly just chant it once and then we'll conclude. Om Pratasmarami Hrudisam Spuradatma Tattvam Satchit Sukham Paramaham Sagatim Turiyam Yat Sapna Jagara Sushuptim Avaiti Nityam ಸಂಘಾಚೋಚನೈರ್ನಿಗಮೋಚುತಮಾಹುರಕ್ರಯಂ ಪ್ರಾತರ್ನಮಿ ತಮಸ ಪರಮರ್ಥವರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಸನಾತನ ಪದ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮಾಖ್ಯಂ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ನಿದ ಜಗತ ಶೇಷಮಶೇಷಮೂರ್ತ ರಜ್ವಾಂ ಭುಜಂಗನಿವ ಪ್ರತಿಭಾಸಿ ವೈ ಶ್ಲೋಕತ್ರಯಮಿದ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಲೋಕತ್ರಯ ವಿಭೂಷಣ ಪ್ರಾತಃ ಕಾಳೆ ಪಠೇತ್ಯಸ್ತು ಸಗಚ್ಛೇತ್ ಪರಮ ಪದ ಹರಿ ಓ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಜಾಭ್ಯ ಪರಿಪಾಲಯಂತ ನ್ಯಾಯೇನ ಮಾರ್ಗೇಣ ಮಹೀ ಮಹಿಷಾ ಗೋ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣೇಭ್ಯ ಶುಭಮಸ್ತು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಲೋಕಾ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಸುಖಿನೋ ಕಾಳಿ ವರ್ಷತು ಪರ್ಜನ್ಯ ಪೃಥಿವೀ ಸಸ್ಯಶಾಲಿನಿ ದೇಶೋ ಯಂ ಕ್ಷೋಭರಹಿತ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಸಂತು ನಿರ್ಭಯ ಸರ್ವೇಂತ ಸುಖಿನ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸಂತು ನಿರಾಮಯ ಸರ್ವೇ ಭದ್ರಾಣಿ ಪಶ್ಯಂತು ಮಾ ಕಶ್ಚಿತ್ ದುಃಖ ಭಾಗ್ ಭವೇತ್ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾ ಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ ಮಾ ಅಮೃತಂಗಮಯ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದಕ್ಷತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓ